everyone. This is Gail, and I this will be shown on New Year's Day, so I hope everyone has had a fantastic Christmas and having a wonderful New Year's, or a wonderful New Year, I should say, because the New Year is just starting. So, I have had several different projects in mind that I wanted to do for you. And if you see up here, I, some of the edges, I still have the pieces out from the um, kaleidoscope cane that we did, I did the last time. I haven't been in my craft room hardly at all except to clean up because I am in the process of switching over to my new room. And the dogs are out of their crates now. No more crates to worry about. And I'm just really excited. But you can see here, I have made a Skinner blend. And I used Souffle, Sea Glass, and Canary. And these were left also from the other um, tutorials that I did. So as you can see... I'm using up a lot of scrap clay. And what I did is I made a Skinner blend, and this makes such a pretty transition here. And this is on a number three. And I am going to take a texture sheet, and I'm going to use this one. I like the little starburst and the little swirls. And I'm going to lay this sort of in the middle where I can get some of the blue and the green and just a little bit of yellow. And I'm, I was going to roll it, but I think I'm just going to press with my fingers and just get a good impression on here, on your clay. And I'm going to make a pendant. And I think it's going to be very pretty. I will roll it just to try to make sure it's all in the same the same depth. Let me see. Oh, that looks good. Now, like I said, this is rolled on a number three, and I should have put it on my on paper before I tried pressing it because now it's going to be stuck to my tile. And in cleaning out one of my drawers, I found some more parchment paper. So I'm going to use that. It's sort of a wax parchment. And I'm going to put my... I've got some black here that's rolled out on the thickest setting of the pasta machine. But I'll use that later. And now I'm going to cut a shape. And when you have something like this, you can look down in here to see what you're going to see. Of course, if I do that, then you're going to see my hair. So I'm just going to take a chance that this is going to look good. And that'll be pretty. I'm going to make several different cuts. Um... me get my knife out because these templates, these are the Sculpey shapelets. I think I'll use this one. I'm going to use one sideways if I I like that. Just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut around it and take your time which is something that I'm not good at. I've been making myself take my time in cooking and all the things that I've been doing over the holidays. And things turn out so much better and much less stress. There's something stopping my blade right there. It's probably a piece of plastic. So I'm going to start down here. But just... 
I found that if I do take my time, it works out so much nicer. All right, so that one is cut out. Along with a few little plastic shavings from my template. Let me pull this one out. And let me see what else I can get out of this. Um, I wonder if I can get a teardrop out of this right here. Try to get some blue in it. There. And what I'm going to try to do is cut around the outside. I think what happens is my blade cuts very slightly into the plastic and it stops me. Whoops. Mess that up. Can't use that. So let me find some, well, maybe I'll just do these two. But you can see, you can make a larger Skinner blend. You could have done, I could have done them all this way, and I would have gotten quite a few pieces out of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Texturize the back of this. And I'm going to use my handy dandy shower glove. I love this. And this side looks cleaner, so I will use this one and just press it with my finger. I just love this until it's the way you want it. Like I said, this is just a cheap shower glove. I think I got this at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to, after I texturize it, I'm going to turn it over and put this one on here. That one needs to be trimmed a little bit. Put this on here. Let me make sure my texture goes. Yep, goes all the way to the edge. Because I'm going to try to get both of these on here. And again, I'm going. You can either take your template, your shapelet again, and cut it, or you can just cut around here. I'm just going to cut around here. And just, I uh, see I should cut just a sliver off of the blue. Try not to do that because you don't want it to be asymmetrical, unless you like asymmetrical. I am not an asymmetrical person. So try not to shave off the side. See if I can do this without shaving off any of the whoops. It's hard. I need to turn it, and I probably should. I am. I'm going to go ahead and turn it. I was trying to keep from having to do that so it didn't confuse you as to what's going on. And I can see that I didn't trim this very straight. And the only reason you need to trim this straight, we're going to wrap something else around it. But it's easier 
if you do it when with a straight side so that the, your finished out, outside is going to look good. And when it comes out, then you can see the places you need to trim a little bit more. And this one, since it was a cutter, I'm going to go ahead and use the cutter. And again, excuse me if my hair gets in the shot, but I need to see what I'm doing. So I've seen you. Ha I've shown you how to do it with a cutter and with. A knife. All right, so we've got these two pieces. Now, what I'm going to do here, I don't think I want this to be this thick. This is on the thickest setting, the rest of the black. I'm going to roll this on a number three. Actually, I'm going to fold it. I should have done this before. Make sure there's no air in there. Because I need some long strips. There we go. Now, I'm going to use a ruler. so that I can get a straight edge here. Well, it's a little cool in my craft room. Let me cut this off. So the clay is a little stiffer than it normally is. That's one reason I use the souffle. So I'm going to have to press down really hard on this so that the clay doesn't pull out from under my ruler. Now press so hard the clay stuck to it. My little, this is one thing that the kidney is good for. Help get it, get things unstuck. And I don't know if you watched my last video, but I did say that I could not find the kidney. I'm going to still cut on this side. It didn't cut very straight. I'm still going to... Uh, I couldn't find the individual kidneys, but I found a um, set. I'm going to find a different ruler. I don't like this ruler. I found a set of several different shapes, and that might work even better than having the kidney shape. They're all different shapes and they are on my Amazon page. And the link to my Amazon page is going to be below. Now what you want to do is to cut a piece that is the thickness of these two pieces of clay. So I'm thinking maybe that wide. And this isn't very straight. There we go. And this is something that can also be adjusted after you apply it to your design. 
which I will probably have to do because this is much wider. But what? pick out which where you want the top and the bottom to be, and I think I want the blue to be at the top. So I'm going to start at the bottom and just lay this on here, and I'm trying to get it even with the front. And then we can trim off the back. It's actually not that much too wide. And it goes around and it meets right here. So just cut that off. Actually, I'd only thing about black, I love black on jewelry especially, but it's so hard to see when you have black on black. That just meets, which is what I wanted. Then what you can do, once you make it sure that it's level all the way around, like right here needs to be pulled up a little bit. Turn it over, and then you can take your blade, and just kind of cut straight across. You don't want to cut your background, but you want it to be flush with your background. And just do it slowly. This is something, it takes a while to get, a, get the hang of it. Not that I am an expert by any means. I'm not a big jewelry person. The only reason I make jewelry is because some of you enjoy making jewelry. But if it were left up to me, I would not make the first piece of jewelry. And I stretched this a little bit when I straightened it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut straight down. Then I'm going to pull the outside of this one off. Actually, that was right where I needed to cut it. Never mind. So now it's all the same size. Just take your finger and blend the seam. Or if you don't know how to do it with your finger, get a um, got a little speck of black on the front, and I really don't want that there. Try to keep your work surface as clean as you can. But this is going to be one. And I know, so far this really isn't anything spectacular. But I promise you when we're finished, you're going to love it. Or maybe not. You may not like it. I like it. Let's see if I can get this straight again. too worried about it. It will work out in the end. I'm not even going to worry about keeping it straight. I'm just going to you would think as cold as my clay is that it wouldn't stick to anything. And I hope this is going to be long enough to go around this piece, but I don't know. I think that's going to be the top where the sun is. So I will start down here. And the reason I start at the bottom is that way if you can't get the seam totally covered up, you can, you know, slice it off. I mean, or 
have it on the bottom and nobody will see it on the bottom. Just try to make sure this stays flush at the top. This is up a little, well, no, it slipped right on down. Okay. Follow your corners. Make sure that your corners are nice. And we'll do the same thing. This time I'm not going to worry so much about trimming this until I'm finished. Because again, we need to make sure that it's all stuck all the way around. This is not even right here. What's left over? I'll trim where it meets. I'm going to trim it first. You notice I don't use my knife when I trim like this because it's easier to keep this flat, whereas with a knife, it kind of goes where your hand sends it. And sometimes that's not where you want it. This you can keep pretty flat. Sorry for the silence. But there we go. Now we've got two of these made. And I think they look nice. I gotta clean smooth this seam. Can you see the seam right there? And the best thing to do is just rub it. Just take your finger and lightly rub over it. And your finger will drag just enough of the clay. to fill in that little crevice. And so you can still see it very slightly. And if I worked with it a little bit longer, I would get it smoothed out. But what I'm going to do right now is let me just make sure all these are flat. I'm going to put a hole. Um, how big a hole do I want? I think I'm just going to use one of these. My needle tool is going to be too big, but I'm going to put a hole. Actually, on this one, I might put a bale on it. But this one, I'm going to come in at an angle and poke a hole and go on the other side and try to match it up. Come in at an angle and poke a hole. And I think what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to glue in some um, Buna cord, which is a rubber cord. Well, that was scary. I don't know where that red clay came from. It dropped off of something, and I don't have any red clay out here. But this one, I might make a little bale. And to do that, let me see. Where's my little dowels?
Here you go. And the reason I use wooden dowels is because they, they can go in the oven and they don't burn. I'm going to pull out a few of these because I haven't, I've used up the ones that I already had out. And I'm going to take some clay and I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine. I'm going to roll it out with the roller before I put it in the pasta machine. Make sure it's set on the thickest setting. don't need anywhere near this much, but it was easier to roll this much through it. Let me put this in my little jar. And I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. I'm probably going to go again to a number three. And I guess I ought to texture it. I don't know if the texture will stay in it or not with what I'm going to do. But I'm going to take a piece of this And let's see, how wide should we have it? Maybe this wide. Cut off all the non-textured part. And what I would do is take one of these little wooden dowels Let me come in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I've got the textured side down. I'm going to take this and roll it just like that and then cut off first I need to make sure it's all straight and even Cut off about this much. Leave it on the dowel and then you can lay this right over the top of it. And that should stick because it's raw clay to raw clay. But because it's a little cool in here, I'm going to put just a dab of liquid clay on it. Just a little dab. Just to make sure that it grabs. It's nothing worse than going through your project and then have it fall apart. But glue that down there. And actually I'm going to need to texture this a little bit more. And then on the back, take a clay shaper or a tool. I mean, you can use these little tools with the rubber tips. You can use, this is a, a metal tool. And I'm just going to press this a little bit. kind of do away with the, not do away with the seams, you'll still be able to see the seam. And I'm going to press this down a little bit because I did smooth out some of the texture. And I'm going to put this on an index card. 
and I'm going to bake it just like that and I'm going to bake this like this and when we come back I'll show you how to finish this off and really make it pop it's going to be gorgeous I promise you so there's the other one so I'll be back let me move the camera out while I'm thinking about it and we'll be back after it bakes okay I'm back now and everything is baked and I'm going, oh, this is really nice and loose, so I'm just going to pull this skewer out. And see, I have a nice little hole there that I can put some cording through. But before we get to that point, I want to finish the top. Now, I have antiqued things before with you. And um, I'm going to do it again this time, but with a different technique. Or maybe I'll do one the regular way and one the other. Um, I'm going to pour out some black paint. And I'm just going to put it here on my paper. Don't need much. I've got a brush here that's watered, got water in it. And I'm going to take this and just smear the black paint all over my design. Now this is the way I antique a lot of my things. And I'm going to take a dry paper towel and wipe this off. And you can wipe as much off as you want. And you can see here my design isn't as deep. So I probably shouldn't have put this in the water yet. I'm going to have to be care more careful with this. And that's what happens. If your design isn't deep enough, you can wipe off your paint. So what I'm going to do is put this on here and let it dry for a minute. I'll do the whole thing. Make sure your black paint is in all your little grooves. And let it sit there for a minute while I do this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. But on this one, I planned on doing something different, but I may do it on that one instead. Make sure your black paint is in all your little grooves. And then take your dry paper towel. Oh, I see some places where it didn't go. You might need to pounce a little bit. And then wipe off. Now, I think what I'm going to do on this one let me get I'm getting a baby wipe if you're wondering what I'm doing. You can do two things. You can take a baby wipe and just go over it easy to remove the paint that's on your color. And see right there the color is not staying in because the groove isn't very deep. Sorry, but I cut my finger while this was baking and I have to be careful. So I'm going to put this in here. Kind of try to repair this. And I'll let that sit for a minute. Now, if this doesn't work, that's still going to wipe it all off. I was hoping it would dry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put paint on this one, and I'm going to let it dry. So I'll probably have to wait a little while. 
And let me see if this one did any better. Just be careful when you wipe. Actually, I'm going to go back to my dry paper towel. There, that looks better. But there's one. Of course, I've made a mess. I'm going to let this one dry a little bit longer. It's still pretty wet. I'm just going to put it over here out of the way so I can get this piece of parchment out of here before I get paint all over everything. Throw away all my painty stuff and I'll get a clean one when I need it. So on this one, let me get another wet wipe. You can clean it up either with a wet wipe, you can get a Q-tip. Just be careful that you don't wipe all your black off your design. And of course, there's one little spot right here where I wiped it off. Let me put on another dab of black paint. This is just regular craft paint. Actually, I think I'm going to use a fine little brush. See this little tiny brush? And put it in the paint and I'm going to try to paint in this little groove. Because it seems like that's the only place I was having an issue. That ought to be fine. So what I'm going to use is Buna cord, and this is uh, number 004, well it's 2 millimeter Buna cord, and it, I, it says this came from www.industrialartsupply.com, but I know that's not where I got it. It was probably in a gift basket or something that I got somewhere. And I'm going to see how this fits in the little hole. Hopefully it will fit, or I might have to drill it a little bit bigger. has to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to get my drill, which is, I just saw it a while ago now it's is that it yes get my little hand drill and just drill this hole a little bit and I like to put my hands on either side just to make sure I don't come through the front or the back that would be embarrassing let me see if that made it big enough. Not quite, so I'm going to drill a little bit more. And I'm not going deeper, I'm just kind of going around the edges. You can see how it pulls the clay out. Hopefully that will work. Or I may have to go with a different cord. I think that goes in. Let me just want a little more, just a little bit more, because it, it was going in, but it was really difficult. So I'm just going to 
Take a little bit more clay off the edge and that ought to work fine. Yeah, that works. All right, so I'll have to do the same thing to the other side. You can see how easy polymer clay drills. And this little drill, you can get these just about anywhere. Michael's or... Uh, I'm trying to think of where. Probably Hobby Lobby would have them. They probably would not be in with the clay things, though. It would be with some maybe the wooden tools. Let me see if this side is wide enough now. Just a little bit more. It's just a little bit tight. And when I'm drilling, instead of pushing in, I'm pushing to the outside so that it's pulling clay off of the edge rather than going deeper. You don't need it any deeper. All right. And I also have these little rings that come with it. And these just kind of give it a nice finish. You see these little rings, the little rubber rings. Now, you, I could have done this while the clay was still unbaked because you can put rubber in the um, oven. It doesn't get hot enough to melt it or anything. But I really wasn't sure. But I'm putting this just on the end. And let's see, where's my super glue? I love this Loctite super glue. It's gel and it's in the little squeeze thing. Let me just make sure it's not dried up. It lasts forever. may need to stick a pin down in it. I think I have a new one up here that I haven't opened yet. Well, actually, they've both been opened. I'm going to stop the camera for a minute while I get Okay, I had to open a new one. The two that I had were uh, already dried up. So, I, But this lasts a long time. These other two that I had, I've probably had them three years. So they last a long time. But this I really like because you can control the glue. So I'm just going to squeeze it lightly I can't tell if any came out let me do it this way where I can see yeah there's some coming out and put this in It went in pretty easily. I just want to make sure it's pressed down tight. This is super glue, so it dries really quick. I got paint on my cord. I thought I did. Let me move, remove some of these shavings out of the way. 
and then decide how long you want it. Now I have never been, I know there are ways to make closures for necklaces, but I'm not really good at those. So I'm going to put this, excuse me, I'll put it around my neck for a minute. And that will go around my neck. So I'm just going to cut it right here. And where is, there it is. Put this back in the bag. It's easier if you roll it up. It fell off my hand so it wasn't rolled up anymore. But it goes in the bag easier this way. But I will see if I can find a vendor for the, a source for the uh, Buna cord. When you go to polymer clay events, a lot of the vendors will give you samples. And the reason for the samples is so you can try it and hopefully you will buy more from them. So let me do the other one. Get my little ring out. Slip it on the end. And this just, the little ring just gives it a nicer finish. So you just don't see a rubber cord going into your necklace. And it can go way up if you want. You can roll it. So you can go that far if you want because all you're going to do is slide it back down. But again, we're going to put some super glue. And I like this because it's a gel. You don't normally need to wipe it off with a wet cloth, but since I had one there, I am. But always put your cap back on. And now you just take your other... Let me straighten it out so it's not so wonky shaped and press this in and then roll your little ring down there and again just kind of hold it in place tight until the super glue works it's maybe 15 seconds or so And there you go. There's one necklace. Now let me show you the other one. Should be dry by now. Not quite. But it may be dry enough. I'm going to take... There's a couple of things you can use. This is a... a drywall mesh that is good to use as a sanding. I wouldn't use this on here because you don't want to take too much off so I'm getting some sandpaper and this is a pretty coarse sandpaper for polymer clay. It's uh, 220 and it should be wet and my water is black so I don't know that I'll do I know what I can do. I'll spray it I'm going to take a dry paper towel and wipe off the wet paint or just dab it off. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to have to move my camera a little bit because I'm going to have to get on the edge. Because this has a lip, this comes up. I'm going to have to do it off the edge of my tile. And I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. But I'm just going to start sanding. And like I said, be sure that it's your sandpaper's wet. And you can look, but you can see that it's beginning to sand off some of the paint.
and I would go back to a dry well it still pulled it out of there it's just not deep enough so letting the paint dry did not help in this case but let me go ahead and get the rest of the paint off See how black it is from the paint being sanded off. Use a wet one. So I should have looked at my design a little bit better before I started working on it. But you know, I can take maybe a magic marker. If I have one over here, I've taken so many things over to my paper crafting, but I like to keep a magic marker here. And just maybe I can go in these grooves so that all isn't lost this is a permanent marker it's not a sharpie but it's a permanent black marker with a fine tip. What's it called? Pro Pro Marks. Oh, that's even finer. I don't know if this would work or not. It actually works better. It just Follow your design. Whoops. I'm sorry this one didn't turn out well because I really like this one. But I just wanted to show you, you can fix it. But I probably will not wear this one just because... I don't know. I am such a purist. I don't like even adding paint to my polymer clay. Because if I want something polymer clay, I want it to be polymer clay. But I do add paint when I antique something. But these grooves are very shallow. I can see why the paint came out of it. But anyway, you can you can do that. Wipe off where the paint, or you can either sand some more, or you can just wipe off with a wet wet wipe the areas where the paint didn't all come off. And this one, you would just slip a cord through here. Um, just to sh well, let me get a thicker one for that. This is a little bit thicker Buna cord compared to this one. See the difference? But this one I could just put through here. And I do have the little rings for those too. But with this bale that I made, I don't think that's necessary. But you could, and then there's another necklace. So I hope you like these. Sorry it didn't turn out quite the way I expected. But um, I might even sand this one a little bit just to get um, some of the paint off of it. Either that or maybe the wet wipe will work. It's just a little bit too much of the black paint. I want to see more of the green and the blue. And I'm 
probably wiping off what paint was art was in the grooves. But there you go. Two ways to make a necklace and you can just imagine if you do a whole sheet like this one I only did two pieces but if you if I had textured this whole piece I could have gotten four or five more out of this area around here in different colors so this is if you're making things for gifts or if you're making them to sell this is a great way to do that and have a lot of quantity just make sure that your design is pressed in better than I did. When I look at this, I can see that I didn't press in all the way. Along here is not pressed in. But make sure you get a good, deep impression. Because I really like this stamp. And I think it would make a really cute necklace like these. So, I will be back again next Monday with another polymer clay tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will um, always be back on I mean on Fridays with my Friday frolics and I will see you then. Bye bye.